I've been thinking a lot about the kidney lately and trying to understand it. And when I study a big topic like the kidney, I try to come up with a working metaphor that helps me to focus my study to, to figure out what's going on. And as I thought about the kidney, I kept coming back to the idea of a kitchen sink. So I'm calling this video, Your Kidneys, the Kitchen Sink, and the Canary. Um, and a couple thoughts. First of all, all the garbage from the rivers and the sewers, it flows down to the ocean. So the ocean becomes essentially a sewer. And all kinds of debris accumulates in the ocean. There's something called the Great Big Pacific Trash Island, or it's called the Pacific uh, Garbage Patch. All these plastic bottles and other uh, garbage just piles up and it almost makes its own little island. And in the human body, the equivalent spot is like the kidney. And we're going to talk about what that means. Okay, the kidney, of course, filters the blood, and then it makes it into urine, uh, the waste products, and excretes that to the bladder, and then this is the bladder jet, then we void it out. Okay, so now why do I say it reminds me of the kitchen sink? So normally the kitchen sink flows into a drain and it's removed from the body, okay? Some kitchen sinks have a garbage disposal, which is a nice thing to have, but the human body does not have a garbage disposal. You can't get rid of uh, problems that easily, so you want to take good care of it. If the kitchen sink is not well taken care of, you end up, well, first of all, here's a garbage disposal, you know, and that'll clear everything out, and it's wonderful to have that, but the human body does not have that. Okay, so if this gets plugged up, this drain, then you're going to have a, a backflow into the human body of the waste products. So here is an obstructed sink, and the water now is backing up, and it's overfilling the sink bowl, and it's flowing onto the water, and it's a, it's a problem. Okay, so why do I say it's a canary in the coal mine? Because in the kidney, you can measure a decline in kidney function. And it's called the glomerular filtration rate. The kidney filter unit is called the glomerulus. The rate at which it can filter the blood is called the filtration rate. So it's GFR, glomerular filtration rate. It's one of the most common lab tests in medicine. And as people get older, and especially if they've got bad habits, their GFR keeps dropping and dropping. And when that happens, the kidney uh, becomes scarred and atrophic. It shrinks. Okay, so I was thinking about this. I'm like, gee, the kidney shrinks and becomes atrophic as it fails, but that's like what happens to the brain. You know, you hear all this nonsense about Alzheimer's disease and multi-infarct dementia, but I look many thousands of brains, and the, by far the most common thing I see is the brain shrinks. And when I say it shrinks, like here's a, a normal, relatively normal looking brain. It's uptight against the skull. This is an MRI, so it's harder to see the skull because you don't get motion in protons and bone. So let me show you a CAT scan. It'll make more sense. So with a CAT scan here, the brain has fallen away from the skull. Here's the inner table of the skull. That's the outer table. And there's a lot of cerebral spinal fluid in between. The back of the brain, because of gravity, the patient is laying on the table, the CAT scan table supine, is up against the skull. So if the entire brain looked like this, we'd call it a tight brain, like a young brain, where there's not a lot of cerebral spinal fluid on the outer surface of the brain in between the brain and the skull. This is like a loose brain, a trophic brain, a shrunken brain. And this is what I see all the time. This is by far the most common thing I see on all these uh, brain CTs and MRIs where the history is cognitive decline, you know, memory loss, dementia, okay? So a shrunken atrophic brain, just like the kidney shrinks and it's atrophic. But the difference is we can monitor the kidney function very precisely. And in a sense, when you see that GFR dropping, it's almost like you've turned over the hourglass and the person's time is running out. If they get their health habits together, you know, eat a very low protein diet, low in phosphorus, low in acid, low in advanced glycation end products, they can really slow that down a lot. That's like what Kempner was doing with his patients back in the day before there was dialysis. So we're going to talk just a little bit more about this. Here's the renal artery goes into the kidney, then it goes up into the renal cortex. Cortex means the periphery, like the bark, bark of a tree. So that's the renal cortex. These are called the medulla, medullary spaces. Uh, so here's the inflow artery, um, the afferent arterial, and the blood will then be filtered in here, and then the urine, the primary urine, comes out in this what is called Bowman's capsule. Then it goes through the tubules, and certain things are reabsorbed. Okay. This is just a little more detailed drawing of the, the Bowman's capsule right here where the urine is filtered out. It's called the primary urine, and subsequently it gets processed by the tubule as it goes along before the final urine is excreted you know, into the uh, collecting system of the ureters and whatnot. 
The kidney, where it first filters the blood, it's like a strainer. This is also called a colander. And you have a certain size for the holes. And anything bigger than this can't get filtered through those holes. And the human kidney is very much like that. Um, so the, you have the blood coming in, and that's the feed, so to speak. And then what makes it through the holes is the filtrate. Okay, if these holes get bigger, bigger and bigger things can get filtered through. So most common, so here would be an example of the holes being made bigger. So here's the baseline starter holes, and then here's the holes that they get made bigger. So now bigger proteins can pass out of the blood into the filtration space, Bowman's capsule, the primary urine, as those holes get bigger. And something like that is what happens in humans. Here's a little more detailed drawing of the kidney. So here's the afferent arterial. The blood comes in. This is just continuation of it as it loops around. This right here is a protein, albumin. It's the most common protein in the blood. It's pretty small. It's about 69 kilodaltons. And normally it's not filtered in significant amounts into the urine. But with uh, progressive uh, increased leakiness of the kidney endothelial layer, capillary uh, basement membrane of the glomerulus, the whole thing is called the glomerulus, you get more and more leak of albumin, the protein from the blood. And you can get microalbuminuria, macroalbuminuria, and frank uh, nephrotic range proteinuria. The more protein leaking into the blood, the worse, okay, and the faster the kidney is failing. Then the kidney begins to compensate. These are called the mesangial cells here in the center of the glomerulus. They will become quite hypertrophic, and additional changes will occur that will sclero sclerose off this glomerulus uh, when it's leaking too much protein. Okay, there's, there's more to the physiology than that. We're not going to go into all the diabetic kidney physiology at this time, but I'm just letting you know. The holes get bigger, you leak more protein, and then the nephron gets scarred off and it shuts down. That's basically what happens. Okay, so here's a little bit more detailed picture. So here would be a normal inflow of blood. This is a normal uh, nephron on this side. And the blood is then from these capillaries. The green stuff is the albumin. So normally it stays in the blood, okay? Um, then you have the capillary basement membrane, the purple here. You've got the podocytes, foot cells, uh, reinforcing it on the outside. This little orange cell is the endothelial cell. So it's almost like a three-part layer. Endothelial cell, glomerular basement membrane, and then podocytes. And all this stuff is designed to make sure you only filter out the waste products and the things that should be filtered out in here. Okay, now here it is with more advanced proteinuria and diabetic nephropathy. More and more of this green stuff, the albumin, is being filtered into Bowman's capsule, into the primary urine, and you don't want that. That's a very bad thing for kidney health and for the patient's health overall. Uh, we'll talk more later about what it means. One thing you'll notice is that the capillary basement membrane, this purple line, is markedly thickened. Okay, okay so this is albumin. So what I'm basically saying is, that's what happens and why you want to take care of stuff in your body because you'll leak more and more protein and you'll also then, with progressively worsening diabetic kidney failure, you'll sclerose off the glomerulus and it'll just stop working. The whole thing will be sclerosed off and destroyed. Um, and what I'm saying, though, why do I find it so interesting? Because you can monitor it by following the glomerular filtration rate and a couple other kidney labs like the BUN, blood urea, nitrogen, the rate at which the kidney's failing. And... There's something similar going on in the brain. We just don't have a good way to measure it. And so what I'm saying is if I, you know, if you go into any, you know, CAT scan department or MRI department, anywhere where they're checking patients' renal function every day, and they check tons of patients, they'll check hundreds in one hospital in one day, um, you're going to see lots and lots of people have a mild to moderate kidney failure. It's super common. Once they get over 50 and especially over 60 and 70, it's super common. Not all of them do. I'll see patients who are 80 years old with totally normal kidney function, but I'll see quite a few with uh, moderate abnormal function. You know, it's, it's relatively uncommon to have severe kidney dysfunction because, you know, they're on dialysis and they usually die pretty soon, okay? Most kidney failure patients, they don't make it to dialysis. They die of heart disease before that because it's a major increase in cardiovascular risk. But the reason I went through all this was you can monitor what's happening in the kidney, and it's a reminder that something similar is happening in the brain. So you want to get your act together fast when you see a drop in your kidney function. You, you can just check your GFR. You can check your GFR every couple of years. Check your GFR. Like me, I'm 61 years of age. I would just check my GFR about once every five years, okay? 
because I know I'm really healthy. Okay, if I wasn't so healthy, I would check it more often. Anyways, I, I, I think that was a, an interesting metaphor. If you're interested in the kidney, that's an interesting metaphor, the idea of being like a kitchen, a kitchen sink that fails and being like the ocean sewer and the ability to monitor kidney function. It's a canary in the coal mine indicator of you probably also losing brain cells and having tissue dysfunction elsewhere as sewer-like debris being deposited elsewhere and you just can't monitor its rate or effect in those other locations as well as the other things going on in the kidney, the hypertension, the hypoxia, and the diabetes-related stuff.